Hello my soccer universe. We're gonna talk about both of the Bundesligas because we had a cup and league double in both of these leagues. And I had another outing with my family to the stadium to watch Lusk play the second game against Sturm on Easter Sunday. Yes, yes, although in a slightly different configuration. We'll talk more about that once we get to the game. Needless to say, Yes, so this outing was a positive one, so I decided, of course, we're gonna wear my Lusk jersey. Oh, not my Lusk jersey, one of my Lusk jerseys, I should say uh, that way. But yeah, uh, Lusk Sturm, both games, uh, but especially the first one, the, uh, uh, high quality games. Absolutely, those two teams do not disappoint. There's always great games. They are very well matching each other. It's a very even matchup and it is super intense and great watching, especially the cup semifinal. The first half is, was, was one of the best games that I have seen this year for sure. Uh, over in Germany, we also had a cup and a league double and another one where uh, things went different ways. Between Bayern and Freiburg, where Freiburg pulled a major upset on Tuesday evening, one that made me smile so much. However, then in the league, it went the other way. Needless to say, tons of emotions after each of these two games, uh, which we're also going to talk about. Uh, overall, the German Cup semi-final is a rather interesting one because both of the top two are not present. They both got eliminated, Bayern and Dortmund. And so it seems like a wide open field because no one really trusts Leipzig either to do that. But you know, let's see about that. But in the, in the Bundesliga, I think some of the best was, uh, have, uh, most important results were happening on the bottom of the table where, um, for instance, Stuttgart got a huge win, taking them away from last place. Köln probably with a win got themselves out of trouble. Bremen just fought back hard enough. So uh, quite some interesting things happening. But enough of the talking. Let's go straight into the Austrian Cup. The Cup semi-final, uh, which was played on Wednesday and Thursday, and that is only due to that the uh, Austrian uh, league, the top teams play all on a Sunday. Uh, that were two interesting matches. I mean, Rapid Vienna against the Reed. Everyone knew that Rapid is gonna win that one because Reed don't do well uh, in Vienna. Uh, I think in the league they have never even uh, won there. I'm not even sure if they have picked pick the point. I think they won once a cup game. Uh, and it was not a great, great game. Burgstaller scoring just before the half, and then a really nice goal in the 83rd minute where he lobs um, the goalie from far out. And you thought it's done and dusted. However, Reed somehow manages to get themselves back uh, with a, a penalty in stop, stoppage time and then having a, a really good chance to equalize and go into stop. So, so Rapid were rather uh, shaking there. However, they are in the final and they have not won the Austrian Cup since 1995, uh, which is a whole lot of time for them and uh, almost unheard of. They've been to the final, but they've never won it. But it was pretty clear that the winner of the second duel is the one who will be the favorites in that final. Uh, and it was one where Lusk was the only team the Sturm had not beaten this season. Uh, and, and it was also in so far interesting because Sturm has definitely the upper hand over Rapid. But Lusk would be... Uh, has always had a hard time against Rapid. So, so you have to, you, the, uh, it was really intriguing from, from the answer that last proper is the one, one team that can hurt Sturm the most. But if they win, uh, Rapid is the, t the team that usually hurts Lask quite a bit. But uh, if Sturm wins, then they would uh, beat Rapid. So it, from, from the beginning, the game had to be then postponed from 8.30 to 9, 9 o'clock because uh, active re uh, reanimation or resuscitation had to had take place among the, the spectators. So it kind of dampened the um, mood a little bit. However, as soon as the game was on, it was end-to-end -end action. Uh, first chance for Sturm. However, uh, then Lask had two big chances where within a minute they twice hit the post. Uh, where you really think, I mean, 
One, the first one, uh, AF after Kora Nakamura has a free shot and hits straight on the on the post. It's cleared for another corner and then the ball goes on the inside of the post and goes along the line. And at that moment I knew, oh, this is gonna be really, really hard because you gotta convert your chances against Sturm for 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 sure. Uh, Omega then immediately after has another one. Uh, for Sturm Graz, uh, and so it went back, back and forth, and I would say up until the 30th minute, I think Lask even did it, did it so well. They really neutralized Sturm as much as they could, created some chances, and Sturm didn't then create much themselves. However, games between those two teams are always very, very few physical, and there was uh, one uh, action by Schneck where I really think a yellow card cards given, but with his foot so high on the knee, I've seen red cards given for that as well. And this is exactly what um, the coach, uh, coach Kubert and F. F. Edwards said. Yeah, um, the referee was not with us because there should have been many more yellow cards for Sturm than it was for uh, Lusk. However, as I said, towards the end of the first half, there were first chances for Sturm and after the half, uh, the game for 10 minutes kind of settled. I think that there was a shot for Lusk, um, but Lusk lost control of the game. Sturm made the right adjustments, and then it's kind of a, a stupid lost ball, uh, and then not countering uh, Horvath, who runs and takes a brilliant shot from far out and makes it 1-0. And I really had the feeling, yeah, this is not going to be an uphill battle. And it reminded me flashbacks from other uh, matches against Sturm. I, I remember a Cup semi final in 98, where we also played great. It was also an amazing game, and you lose 2 0 because you had to open up then in the end. Uh, it did not go that way. Uh, Lusk tried to create a few chances, but there was never really the clear op opportunity. I mean, Flecker ran once through. He then finds in the 83rd minute, he finds uh, Jules on, on the box, but the pass was placed too far back, so he cannot get the shot off. And that was basically the big chance over, overall. Uh, it was very physically, uh, as I said, it was overall a great game. Probably the best game in Austria for the entire season, I would argue. Uh, action, I mean, they were even talking at the halftime uh, that... What was shown in the first for first half, it would not feel out, out of place, for instance, the Premier League. Sturm, the luckier, but probably just about because they were the better team in the second half. The first half was rather even the second half. Sturm were the better team. They had them control, and for that reason, I think they deserve to move on. But it hurt, honestly, because that was a game where Lusk gave their all and, you know, with another game come coming would have been a real big boost. So there was kind of a little negative series coming. Now the final is Rapid Vienna against Sturm Graz played in Klagenfurt. Uh, and this has all kinds of crazy implications. Um, a, two Bundesliga, uh, two Bundesliga games now need to be moved from uh, that Sunday uh, to midweek, which I wonder, couldn't you have just scheduled in such a way, uh, just roll the dice and have maybe Rapid Sturm on that weekend that you have to move only one game instead of two. The second one is, uh, there is a car-free day proclaimed in Klagenfurt on that day, which is very interesting when the two biggest fan bases in Austria are descending on the city. That is gonna be truly, truly special. So there were some thoughts by, with Rapid Vienna, why don't you play it in the big stadium in Vienna? <laughs> Klagenfurt is much closer to Graz. Graz would not, never have agreed to that. Okay, let's talk Bundesliga uh, in Austria. Uh, it, there was a huge result in the relegation with Hartberg beating Ried 3-1. We will see Hart. Hartberg is still also favorites to go down, but honestly, the way it's trending, Ried is, I think Ried is not looking good at this moment. And the uh, uh, derby between Lucerne and Alltag, the teams that are the closest, the stadiums are the closest to each other in the Bundesliga uh, this, this season. Lucerne wins that one again and Alltag, um, you know, just dangling there. Yesterday, Rapid Vienna get an easy win over Klagenfurt, but the crazy game was between Salzburg and Austria Vienna. Uh, it was probably a little bit deceiving at Salzburg at a 2-0 halftime lead because Austria Vienna had actually quite good ch ch chances and, and uh, under the new coach who had been the interim coach for Stuttgart uh, just uh, this past 
uh, fall, uh, they actually develop a very offensive and a dangerous uh, way of playing. And on their day, they can be really, really good. Uh, Finding yourself then 2 0 down, as I said, it was a little bit not, did not seem quite right uh, over, over, over. However, they get themselves back in, in, into the game because Salzburg was were just really lax. The Baka, which in the 47th makes it 2 1. And then uh, a, a weird scenes where suddenly Ramstel was, was sent off for uh, basically nothing, uh, and the uh, VAR uh, got rid of that. Uh, and then Ramstel actually scores the equalizer in the 7-7-7 and a little bit later Dovedan, and there was a two formula last class, gives Austria in the 80th even the lead. And Salzburg, with very lax defending, have to find themselves back and then they get a rather contentious penalty that Cesco converts for a 3-3. But for me and my family, it was all about Watching Lask against Sturm again Easter Sunday and Easter Sunday definitely had an impact because in all the games there were not as many spectators as you would expect. But you know, so so so, so be it. In Linz it was the first time that one of the larger fan groups is visiting a stadium and it's really funny because Salzburg is close and they brought a lot of, a, a lot of fans. But they're not of the um, uh, ilk that for instance what Sturm Graz can produce or what Rapid Vienna of course can produce. And so this was a real clash again between black and white. Unfortunately, my wife uh, still isn't feeling all that well. Uh, so she called, go, so I called up my father whether he wants to come. He initially declined, but five minutes later he, 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 he called. Yeah, I'm going to join you because my other brother who, who was visiting, he had also uh, tickets for a game. So we went, the five of us together. And I was with my father who has never been to the new stadium. So I was very happy to give that to him. Uh, the game itself, I mean, we always, the kids really, really enjoyed it. We were a little bit too far, uh, too, uh, too soon there, but this time, uh, we actually walked up the hill, which is kind of brought some old memories as well. The kids, I must tell you, it is so much fun, uh, we, with them to see how they enjoy. And of course, the first thing you go to the stadium. They sit down and they get, of course, the drinks and, and so on. after a little while, they start opening the chips back and then it's all like they're in the cinema, but they had uh, so much fun uh, there. Uh, it was really interesting. Let's talk about the game. The game was very much the reverse of the cup game. The first half was a so-and-so game where Sturm had more control of the game. I mean, there were early chances for Lusk. Uh, but I always had the feeling that uh, while they may have had a smidgen more possession, uh, that Sturm had more of the game uh, and, uh, you know, didn't lose balls uh, so crazily, always uh, finding the way towards goal uh, and having the better chances also with Alexander Schlager, the last goalkeeper, being the best player on the field. Uh, and I always felt that the attacks from Lask were always slowed down. They, uh, although they have sometimes the speed, the, the, the center is not so speedy and that always slowed things down. And so while Sturm could have taken the lead in the first half at towards the end, they did so right after after that. And it was such a weird situation because when I saw that one about development, it was a two against five uh, from the point of view of Sturm. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's a dangerous situation, but uh, it should be safe. But Zakaria makes a uh, wiggle, um, gets one player out of it, and then Ayeti makes a run that was initially just offside, but was not. And then he can cross and pass heads in from short distance. Uh, very well played, but also very poorly defended. Uh, and then the game that followed was more or less... Uh, that you saw that Lask is trying hard, they had some, they created some, 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 some chances, but up until the 70th minute, you really felt that, um, yeah, we're trying hard, we probably would deserve an equalizer, but Sturm is just that smidgen better. And I have, 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 have had to say, you know, both fan groups brought their A game, maybe too much pyrotechnics, but whatever. And Sturm in the 70th literally had a huge chance to make it 2-0 and settle the game. And from that car, car, uh, counter where when Moose Uso runs through, cross in, Nakamura cannot really get to, to the end of it, but the ball 
Goes to Mustafa, who sees that many players are on the ground and he just yanks it in uh, through five people more, more or less and then many, many flip-flops. 1-1 one, one, and was a little bit of a relief and then Florian Flecker comes on for Uzor, who had been actually decisive factor, but it was not him, it was then Mustafa crossing in and Nakamura heads it in for a 2-1 win in the 79th minute. And then the only other thing that I have to, that uh, bugged me a little bit is, instead of then going all out and really killing the game off, because Ilza brought, Coach Ilza from Sturm brought uh, his players uh, Lask actually went on a little bit more uh, defense, defensively. Sturm didn't create much anymore and the only other chance was for Lask, but I think you could have killed them off and given them a real beating there. So it's a 2-1 win and it meant a whole lot for Coach Cooper. He is one that usually goes quietly into his um, uh, coaching uh, zone or in, 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 into the lock, locker room. He was running and hugging and everyone, especially the goalkeeper who was right in front of him. This was a scene I have not seen in a long time. And so with that, we have standings. Salzburg could extend the lead over Sturm, but it's now Lask also. So it's four points, four points. So uh, rather, rather tight overall. Uh, Rapid Vienna also four points. So it's kind of a four point thing. Uh, I'm, a, I'm actually more afraid of Austria Vienna than Rapid Vienna at this moment. And on the bottom, as I say, Reed is still down, but Hartberg is, uh, at least by, by the model, still the one to go down most. But uh, I feel that Reed is trending in the wrong direction which we also see here what i just said in the expected standings it seems like up up top that one and two more or less take a uh, 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 given i think lask will hang on to the third spot but let's see um if sturmgratz win the cup then the third spot will get the europa league uh, qualifier spot which would be important as well I would, of course, love if Lask could uh, snatch up a second spot and play Champions League qualification. Upcoming round, Lask has to play in Salzburg. Blah, but at least the two Vienna teams are going to take the points away from each other. So uh, that, I think, it works in a way quite well. Talked a lot about Austria. Now let's uh, quickly talk German Cup. Uh, Frankfurt, two goals within uh, two, two minutes for Kogel Mirai early on decide that game. And Frankfurt, actually, this was a big win for them. I think they have very much a focus on the uh, German Cup this season. Bayern Munich against Freiburg. Honestly, uh, Upo Meccano gives a slightly contentious lead because they was definitely uh, pushed down. Uh, but Höfler just a few minutes later uh, with a long range shot, their only shot on target. Bayern then control the game, create chances, hit the crossbar, uh, stifle Freiburg. But more or less in stoppage time, they hold on. They really hold, hold on, keep... Uh, Bayern in a way at bay as good as they could but they barely got out of their own half however in stoppage time they suddenly do and then it's a shot that uh, Musiala parries with his uh, hand not on purpose but it is a penalty and then the funny thing is who is taking the penalties because uh, Vincenzo Grifo who takes the penalty has already been taken off and then it was between Gregoric and Lukas Höhler uh, Gregoric had just missed for a national so Höhler steps up Converts it one. Freiburg get their first win in Munich. Uh, and that in, in the cup. Huge set of celebrations. Uh, Coach Streich then wanted to actually console Musiala, who didn't want to have anything to do, just pushed him away. However, the good story is that uh, in front of, before the Bundesliga game, Musiala went up to the coach and said, you know, you're going to get it, my jersey. He said, I'm going to give it to my son. But thank you so much. And that's exactly what happened. And the two made up again. So uh, all this drama also gone. Then Stuttgart get a late win at Nuremberg, the last uh, remaining Bundesliga, uh, second Bundesliga side, uh, in you know typical game between a relegation threatened side and one in this uh, and, and a mid, mid to low table uh, team from the second Bundesliga was not not the greatest one, but Stuttgart got that win in a cup semi final as well, and then Leipzig completely dominate Dortmund in a two 0 uh, win it was one nil Werner. I mean, it should have been more at halftime. Dortmund came a little bit back, but never were kind of still, I think, shell shocked from the loss to Bayern Munich. Honestly, the week uh, before, we also know already the semi finals, which are intriguing. We have a replay of the cup final. 
between uh, last years between Freiburg and Leipzig. Uh, so revenge for sure for Fre Fre Freiburg there, but that will be a tight one. Stuttgart against Frankfurt. I think these are the two more shaky teams. Uh, Stuttgart, by the way, with a new coach, Sebastian Hoeneß from Hoffenheim, who Hoffenheim have sacked and got Matarazzo, Stuttgart coach at the beginning of the season. So uh, rather, rather weird <laughs> thing. Um, we're gonna see. I think it's two intriguing ties and I honestly hope, the only thing I care about is that Leipzig do not make it into the final because we will get other, uh, that way we'll get probably a good fan showing with uh, true fans in this in Berlin, although Le Le Leipzig close to Berlin to bring fans, but you know, uh, they are just plastic fans all over. Briefly also on the Bundesliga, as I said, a huge win for Köln. They get it done early or already with Skiri Martel uh, scoring the first 16 minutes. Vargas pulled one back, but then Meine uh, just after making make, make, make 3-1 and Köln seeded one out. That's a big result for Köln, who were about to get sucked into the, rele the relegation fight. But now I think they can establish the mid-table. Europe, I think, is utopic. Augsburg, also not quite safe. As I said, Frankfurt... Um, had to play, it's tough at the moment, I could play against Leverkusen who have, have won at least five games in, in a row already uh, and had completely dumped down in the first half and Frankfurt still probably also with the midweek game didn't help quite. In the second half they got themselves back as they usually do but I have the feeling that in the Bundesliga the Glasner team cannot really leave it up for, for now, they concentrate more on the cup competition. Uh, so uh, gets one back but then Asmoon uh, settles it. Dortmund, uh, that was a dominant performance against Union Berlin. Uh, Malen giving them a win should, should be more and then with the first chance Behrens gets an equalizer however Mukoko gets the winner for Dortmund, which was very well deserved and Dortmund back on winning ways. And if it wasn't for some, uh, you know, if they would have had luck, they could have uh, drawn level with Bayern. However, Bayern got a deserved win at Freiburg. However, it was not that easy. I mean, Freiburg had their chance, but it was mostly Bayern who uh, peppered them uh, again. Got one goal, a long range shot from the Licht, uh, took a crazy turn. Uh, not something that you would, would, would expect because all the other well-played chances just didn't go in. Freiburg did have a chance but um, didn't really work. At the end of the game, uh, jo Josio Kimmich, who was celebrating in front of Fre Freiburg fans, got immediately called call out. A little bit uh, bust, bust up there. But kind of showing how important that win for Bayern was because uh, there's a lot of pressure and they play City next. So uh, watch that space. Mainz for Bremen was a funny game because there was nothing happening for 85 minutes and then everything was happening. Ajorg gives it 1-0, Stege equalizes a, a f more or less from, from the kickoff then. Mainz thought they had one in stoppage time but Füllkrug again within minutes makes it 2-2. It was so funny because all these games that we've talked about they happened at the same, uh, at the same time so I was watching it uh, on the conf conference. It was going, yeah Mainz nothing's happening and suddenly everything is happening in Mainz. And they finish as one of the games with the most goals in the conference. Although, uh, you know, the two big uh, games had a combined of four goals. Well, so be it. In any case, uh, Leipzig uh, get a win over Hertha. Then, as I said, a huge one for Stuttgart in Bochum. Uh, Stuttgart need to, they have now a few games against relegation threatened teams where they definitely need to get it. But Ito Girasi and Va Wagnermann. Uh, the last two 60s and 63rd make it 2-1 and 3-1. Uh, Hoffman pulling one back late, but that was huge for Stuttgart, as, as we'll see. Schalke's momentum has been stopped. After the break, before the break, they were actually in really, really good shape, but now they have lost two, two in a row. And I think that means that Schalke is one of the teams that will go down. Because if you look at the table, they are down now. It's a long climb. Stuttgart might... Uh, I think Stuttgart might climb out out lot if they can get their momentum going. Uh, Hertha also look troubled. Hoffenheim, I think, will get out of it. And I think that Augsburg and Köln are safe now. Uh, Bremen, probably as well. I think they have a lot up top. You know, uh, the top the top position is more or less balanced. It's really hard to see them not winning the league. 
Uh, however, the Champions League uh, spots is what's uh, up for grabs. Union, Leipzig, Freiburg. Uh, don't count out Leverkusen. I think they have a good outside chance. I think Frankfurt will have to work hard to stay in the top seven spots. Um, expected standings tell pretty much the same story for now. Stuttgart on the relegation spot. I give you the upcoming two rounds for now, uh, although I might do a video next week, but let's see how, how it goes. Uh, we don't have really uh, the big one. I mean, Frankfurt Gladbach used to be, uh, you know, with the coaches, but that's not happening now. Uh, Schalke had a huge relegation duel, I have to say. Uh, and let's, let's look for the other ones. Um, yeah, Stuttgart, Dort, uh, Dort, Dortmund. But I think Dortmund will win that one, honestly. Bremen, Freiburg could be an interesting one as well. Leverkusen will probably extend their winning streak. Uh, and you see then the upcoming coming games. Uh, Dortmund, Frankfurt is a rather, rather dicey one. Leverkusen, Leipzig also. So, yeah. That was it for me from mainly Austria and some, Ger uh, some German. Please let me know what you thought about uh, the games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.